Hello, my name is Carolyn, and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about what inspires some of my artwork, um, particularly two women who, um, one is a mixed media painter and the other is a jazz singer. So two seemingly very different um, approaches to art, but I'm going to be talking about how they relate back to me and continue to inspire me. So hopefully after listening to what I have to say, um, you can find some inspiration in their work as well. Um, so the first woman I'm going to be po- going to be talking about, um, her name is Najeka Crosby. Um, so Najeka was born in 1983 um, in Nigeria. She um, grew up there, and when she turned 16, she and her sister decided to move um, to the United States. Um, she took a gap year and put a lot of time into studying, and that ended up um, allowing her to graduate from Yale in 2011, which is an incredible accomplishment and allowed for her to kind of launch her artistic career. So some of the messages behind Crosby's work, um, she really explores this idea of the cultural terrain and tension between um, her experience from her native land, her native homeland of Nigeria and um, her adopted home of America. She um, uses a technique called photo transfer based paintings that kind of expose the challenges of of her being a woman and occupying these two spaces at once. She really draws from her own personal experience, one being um, a woman in Nigeria in the 80s and the other being a woman of color in America in the early 2000s, both kind of drawing from these two um, layers of prejudice put against her and kind of using these hardships that she's faced, merging them together and creating beautiful, beautiful works of art. So I'm going to start um, showing you um, some examples of the type of style that she uses. So here are a couple of her paintings. Um, I personally find her work very mesmerizing, very beautiful. Um, I feel like the feeling that they give to me is that I've actually been in these places that she draws. I feel like I'm like sitting at the table with this woman and it kind of feels like a memory to me more than like a painting because it just feels so personal. But at the same time, it feels like something is amiss. Like you have these very like home-like settings, but just something is a little bit off, which I find I'm very drawn to. And I think is a very interesting, something very interesting to incorporate into a drawing, whether it's purposeful or not. Um, I feel like the medium that she chooses, she chose um, perfectly captures this idea that she wants to put across, particularly in this painting. This is one of my favorites from her. Um, I admire it a lot. I love the two figures, the position that they're in, as well as the sort of empty space surrounding them. Um, Yes, so that, the next woman I'm going to be talking about, um, this is um, Sarah Vaughn. Um, She was born on March 27th, 1924 on Brunswick Brunswick Street in Newark. Um, She began piano lessons at the age of seven. Um, She also had a love for singing throughout her childhood. She sang in the church choir, and she developed a love for pop music um, by listening to records and the radio as she grew up. So some of her inspirations um, are um, the city of New York. She would visit there frequently um, with her friends, and she developed this love and respect and admiration for the city life and all of the different um everything that New York had to offer, essentially. She just fell in love with it. Um, And she actually ended up um, beginning her solo career in 1945 by freelancing on 52nd Street, which is where she ended up getting um, recognition for, and she began building a name for herself, kind of um, through her very powerful vocals. Um, So I'm going to be, these are some praises that she has received about her vocals. She was described as parallels being drawn between her Vaughn's voice and that of opera. Um, She is known for having an exceptional body volume and variety of vocal textures. 
The New York Times actually described her as a singer who brought an operatic splendor to her performances of popular standards in jazz, which is obviously a very high compliment coming from the New York Times. Um, also, Bob James, um, Vaughn's musical directors in the 1960s said that the instrument was there, but the knowledge, the legitimacy, the legitimacy of the whole world was not for her. But in the area and Sarah's range, she could bring something to it that a classically trained singer could not. So obviously, she's a very bold, um, a very passionate, a very talented woman who really um, just connected to people personally just through her voice and how absolutely incredible it is and it was and um, I definitely recommend if you like jazz music um, listening to her she has some really really incredible stuff she's actually um, she has a Grammy for one of her songs and she also um, has a star in the Hollywood um, Hall of Fame which is really really incredible so um, in conclusion how do these women tie into my own art. Um, I feel like in my perfect world, I would be the blend of these two women, one being a more shy, um, not really about the spotlight, kind of just wanting to put her work out there and having people interpret it as they wish, versus the other who is a more um, bold, um, ambitious, loves New York, loves the spotlight. Um, and I take a lot from both of their approaches to their art and hopefully in my future, um, I can learn from them and um, incorporate it back into whatever I choose to do. Um, but thank you so much for listening. I really hope that you took some inspiration from these incredible women, um, maybe as much as I have. Thank you so much.